What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko, back with Tony today. And this deck is actually kind of gaining some popularity right now, but Tony's been on this deck for a while. So Tony, I'm just gonna let you go ahead. But before I let Tony go ahead, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the channel and subscribe to Tony's channel. A link will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, Tony, go ahead. All right, so the deck we're going to be doing today is one that you may have seen topping recently, uh, piloted by Jesse Cotton. It's my variant of the Predaplant deck. Now, if you may recall a few uh, year, maybe, oh, wow, maybe it was two a couple, years yeah, ago. Yeah, maybe it was a couple years ago now. I've been here too long. But yeah. Two years ago, I did a Dependent Plan deck profile when that got that got support in the Legendary Duelist for Bakura, I think. Yeah. Yes, that one. And if you recall, I said the deck was not very good. It was definitely missing pieces. But the new support has definitely made the deck a lot better. And it's finally getting to a place where I actually can do plays for once. Yep. But anyway, let's get into it. Yep. Uh, we have, of course, the three Plant Orpha Scorpio and the one Dark and Cobra. Uh, you may see this card in a number of decks before, just as a small engine that allows you to search for any fusion monster. But like the t uh, Terra Top and spe of Speedboards, this card is crazier in its own archetype because you can just send any monster from your hand to the graveyard to summon any Predator Plant. It's yep. not just Dark and Cobra. It's the rest of your deck as well. And that lets you basically tutor for anything that you need to start your plays with. Yep. Uh, in most cases, it still will be the Dark and Cobra because searching so Poly is, is still really good. pretty great, yeah. but there will be situations where you can get something else. But from there, we then will we have what we call the material Predator Plants in the three Predator Plants Saracenian and three Predator Plants Bisplit. Yep. Uh, I apologize, some of these names are very really difficult, difficult very but difficult. they're a mix between a plant and a predator. Uh, so both these monsters have an effect to put themselves onto the field. Why? Because the Predator Plants do like and have a slight preference to fusing from the field for certain some of their fusions. Yep. Uh, as a result, this is just a way to put them onto the field, but they also have effects that trigger when they're sent to the graveyard. Uh, Serocinian can special summon itself from the hand whenever you would take a direct attack. And if it would battle a monster, it destroys that monster it battles. If it would be destroyed by battle or card effect, it could then, and sent to the graveyard, it could then search for any, uh, or if it's destroyed by battle or sent to the graveyard by a card effect, there you go. that is relevant, um, it will search for any Predap card. This uh, is not just the Predator Plant monsters, but your Predator Plant spell and trap cards as well. Does that also mean it triggers if it's sent as a fusion material? Correct. That there is the part why it matters. Yeah. If it's sent to the graveyard for a fusion material, it will trigger. Nice. Uh, Bisplip, on the other hand, can special summon itself from the graveyard if there is a monster on the field with a Predator Plant counter. Not just yours, but your opponents as well. Nice. Likewise, what, uh, well, but if it does, it gets banished from when it leaves the field. That's fine. This is partially to prevent you do, from doing dumber things, but if this card is sent to the graveyard in any way, it's just for any Predator Plant monster. Okay. The fact that it's sent to the graveyard in any way means that, yes, it can be sent for the effect of something like your fusions, but it also means that, unlike a card like Serocinian, if it's sent for a cost like something for your Orphra Scorpio, it will get the search as well. And that finally gives Orphra Scorpio something to get back from, even if it's discarding something. Yep. So, just two fantastic cards. You'll probably be using all their search effects throughout the turn that you make them. Yep. From there, you then have two pr pr uh, Predator Plant Camellia... Sundew. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's so hard, man. Uh, and the name is not the name is it's not the best name. They named. Yeah. Chlamydia Sundew is supposed to be a reptile looking dude, but he's a monster that says while well, in the field, all your monsters with Predator counters are treated as dark. Yep. More importantly, once per turn, you may fusion summon a dark fusion monster using monsters including itself from your hand, field, or monsters your opponent controls with Predator Plant counters. Nice. Uh, this is, again, going back to the idea of your fusing from the field, but this, in most cases, if you're playing and going first, is just kind of a way to fusion summon. Yep. Uh, and logically, the deck has stone fusions, but this is just a quick monster that you can get access into with something like Orphoscopio that then facilitates a fusion summon using it and any other monster from your hand. Yep. It's just poly. Uh, in, in the rare blue moon, you will get the super poly effect off, but it's not common. Okay. Uh, matching that, however, is to our new Predator Plant Pendulum Monsters with our Predator Plant Pendulum Monster Predator Plant Bufolicula. It's it's a frog. That was a little bit better, actually. Nah, you said that better than the other I ones. hope it is. Uh, Bufolicula is a scale zero, which is not bad for scales in general, but while in the Pendulum scale, it's poly every turn. It lets you fusion summon the dark fusion monster using monster from your hand or field. Oh, nice. That's pretty good. Inversely, though, if this is used as a fusion material and sent to the graveyard or into the face of your X deck, you can add back a Predator Plant monster that's face up in your X deck, except for the Bufalicula. So this becomes relevant purely because, on one hand, it is a poly that you can access and search into that you can use once you get it set up. It can be used every turn, but it combos really well with your next one in your two Predator Plant Triantis. It's, yeah, Triantis. Triantis, Triantis. That was the easiest one to say easily. Yes. Anyway, Triantis here is a scale 8, which means, in this case, you can Pendulum Summon all your Predator Plants, 
That's actually that kind of crazy. It is relevant because if you need to fuse on the field, well, here's a way to get them all onto the field. Yeah. Uh, however, Trident has also had the effect where if you would fuse in some, you may treat your pendulum scales as monsters as if they were on the field. Oh. Can so, he get his effect off of using himself? Correct. If you have both of them on the field, you can force a fusion with both pendulum scales, of which then this will trigger to get this back from your pendulum uh, extra face up, face up extra deck. Deck, yeah. Likewise, if this is used as a fusion material in center of the graveyard or face of extra deck, you can put Predaclan uh, counters onto monsters on the field equal to the number of monsters you control. Uh, this is the first time, again, this is the first time it, you will see the effect to put Predaplan counters onto things. And that is the secondary gimmick of the Predaplan deck. To put these counters onto monsters, which when they are, their levels, if they have levels, will go down to two. And then certain cards interact with them. It's not a great mechanic, but it does have some unique benefits that I'll showcase later. Yep. But this is one of the ways to just spread them all around, uh, given that you can expand to a field. But in most cases, this is just a fusion material that I can access that can be treated as on the field when I need it. Nice. Uh, mind you, I also point out, this triggers off of when you fusion something in any way, not just off of the other pendant yeah. If you fusion something with something and you just need it on the field, you just activate it and go. Yep. Then for the last part of it, we have one called Predaplan uh, Cordyceps. Yep. How do you feel about this card? So this card is, it, it's very weird, but it's very powerful nonetheless. Yep. So Cordyceps has no effect on the field, but while in the graveyard, during your standby phase, you can banish Cordyceps from your graveyard to so target two level four Predaplans in your graveyard and special them to your field. Yep. You cannot know what some of the turn you do that, and you cannot special summon anything except for fusion monsters for the rest of the turn. Which would have been a problem prior to this because it re you really couldn't do anything with it outside of made, make one fusion monster. But now with the new support, you have ways to continuously facilitate fusion summons beyond just having a normal summon of a monster. Yep. And as a result, that you can produce some pretty good things with just a revive two directly from your deck. Yep. Let's not forget, if you revive something like a Chlamydia Sundu in any of your two searchers, you can then use a Chlamydia Sundu to fuse with the second searcher to then access a fusion monster and get a search off. And that is just a great recovery play all around. Yep. Plus, there's a few ways to send him to the graveyard or send him from your hand to the graveyard or get him into your hand to be sent to the graveyard. So. Fantastic card, just great recovery all around. Yep. Then we have our hand traps. We have the three Valor, the two Ash. Uh, you can change this as you wish. This is just for your local meta. My meta just likes to just go off. Then we have the $80 card now in three Preta Practice. This should not be this. Expensive. This should not be this price, but guess what? Hype is like that. Yeah. But Preta Practice is a powerful card nonetheless. When activated, you can special summon a Preta Plant from your hand. Then you can add any Preta card from your deck to your hand. It searches for your spell and traps likewise, but in most cases, it also just allows you to grab anything that you need Probably to done. continue your place. Yeah. And because it adds it, it, let's say for example, you would have special on an Orphus Scorpio, it will then allow you to add the card that you could probably discard for that Orphus Scorpio. And that is the most common play that this effect allows you to do. Uh, just a fantastic searcher card. It is semi-limited or it is somewhat limited by the fact that unfortunately you do need a Predator Plan card additional to this to actually get a search off, which means in certain situations, you're kind of doing some janky plays just to get the setup going. Yep. Then we have three Predator Pruning. Predator Pruning is an equip spell that's just premature burial for the deck. You activate it, target one of your Predator Plants in your graveyard, revive it, equip it to this card. It is not once per turn. You have more copies in your hand, you can revive multiple monsters. Nice. There is no limitation on what you revive, you can revive your Predator Plant fusions. Nice. Great. Uh, and then we have the one Predaponics. Predaponics is like Predapruning, can revive any level four or lower Preda plant from your graveyard or special summon one from your hand. Its effects are negated, but the benefit with this card is it's a continuous spell. For the maintenance cost of 800 per turn, you can just revive something to continuously get the graveyard effect. So it's great for reviving things like your Saracenians or your Bisplits to continuously get searches that way. Oh, and then the Bisplit doesn't get banished if it's summoned off that. Yes. Yeah, so that and that's good. just a way to continuously recycle resources. It's definitely not a card you want super early in the game, but it's something that does become a little more useful compared to a pruning when you just need something to flow. Yep. Uh, then we have a card that I just ragged on uh, in my previous profile, uh, Preta Prime Fusion. So Preta Prime Fusion says you can fusion summon uh, any dark fusion monster using monsters from the field, both players' fields, as long as you two of those monsters are yours. Okay. So in certain cases, you can fuse from your opponent's field when you need to fuse three monsters specifically from the field. There isn't a lot of that, though. So... Don't have high hopes for the Super Poly effect, but it is a quick play fusion, yep. which means in certain situations, you can use this to dodge effects, but it also lets you then fusion someone on your opponent's turn. And that sometimes is equally relevant. Uh, I'm assuming it also lets you do it in the battle phase if you need to. Yes, sometimes there is game situations where this card can allow me to gain my opponent. Yeah. Uh, but in most cases, it's used pretty much used as a quick fusion that I need to access that I can't search compared to any other card. Yep. Going from there, we then have the fusion that we can just 
readily access from our darling Cobra, we have the one Ultra Poly and the one Instant Fusion. Uh, we'll talk about Instant Fusion Synergy in the deck a little later, but Ultra Poly is the one that's preferably the cool one here. Yeah. Ultra Poly, when activated, cannot be responded to. You pay 2,000 life, and then you fusion from your field using two monsters to summon any fusion monster from your deck. Yep. Then you can banish the Ultra Poly from your graveyard to then revive the materials used for that fusion summon. Yep. Uh, this is really powerful because it essentially allows you to perform a costless fusion summon to then allow you to use those revived monsters for any other number of plays. Yep. Uh, this becomes particularly relevant for two reasons. One, because it actually means that you can then actually produce three materials for anything. Because yep. there is no restriction on what you can do afterwards. But it also creates a specifically really weird ruling with a card like Starving Venom that I'm going to reiterate again. Yeah. So Starving Venom specifies that you have to revive a monster. Uh, it requires two monsters, uh, dark monsters on the field. Yeah. And because of that, Transcendent or Ultra Polymerization specifically has to search for the monsters that have the exact same conditions. Yeah. But because their monsters are in the graveyard and not on the field, you can never actually revive anything that you summon off of your, uh, if you, you summon Venom. for Starving Venom. Okay. So this is not a card that you're going to be using to make that. It will be used for making some situations where you want to make things like Double Drinks, the Pelion. Yeah. Uh, but the Instant Poly uh, Fusion, I'll talk about later. Okay. We have the One Foolish. You can dump your Bliss Slip, search for a monster. And we have the three uh, Cross Out Desmond and one Call by the Grave for stopping hand traps. And then we have our traps in the one Preda Planning and the three Imperm. Imperm, I think you already know what it does, but the Preda Planning is the important one here. When activated, you can send any Preda monster from your deck to your graveyard. In doing so, you spread Preda Planning. Preda Predator, Predator counters yeah. on all monsters your opponent controls. This is the best way that you can spread on mass all your Predator counters. Yep. It also, because of the fact that we now have this flip, actually now triggers a search as well. Yep. This yep. is just a search on your opponent's You turn. can also send the other one that during the standby phase. Is, yes, uh, you can also send Cordyceps for in, in case you need to use this effect later. Additionally, while in the graveyard, if you were to fusion summon, you can banish Predator planning from your graveyard to just pop a card. Oh, nice. This is something that you can do actually even on your opponent's turn, even after you've activated this card in the same turn, just to do quick remove. It's a fantastic card nonetheless, but it's also a card that doesn't do anything until you actually do something else with these cards. Yeah. Since you, there's no payoff in the Predator counters on this card alone, you will need other cards to make this useful, which yep. is why we're playing one, because we all search into it. Yep. Anyway, going to the extra deck, we have, we're going to start with the main boss monster, the card we're making, the, we're, our end game here, in our three Dragos the Pelia. Uh, Predator Dragos the Pelia is a dragon? It's, it's no, a it's a plant, plant fusion a monster. Plant, that yeah. actually is relevant in some ways. It's a plant fusion monster that requires a fusion monster and a dark monster. Uh, things that kind of sometimes may be hard, but it's generally easy in the predator plant deck. Uh, while in the field, you could target one monster in the field and just put a predator counter in it. Yep. Why is that relevant? Because this is the payoff for the Predator counters. While she's face up on the field, Predator Plant Dragos to Pelia negates the activated effects of any monster with a Predator counter. Yep. This is a continuous effect, which means you can put a Predator counter on something, and as long as that counter stays on that card, that effect will continuously be negated. And it synergizes really well with Predator Planning. Yes. Then, combined with the Predator Planning, it means that Predator Planning turns into just skill drain your opponent's field. Yeah. And that is just fantastic because it's a continuous effect. Having multiple on the field likewise means your opponent has to remove both monsters to turn off the negation. Yep. And that can be very dangerous when you just set up a fair field with them. It's also 2700. It's actually kind of big, but this yeah. is your preferred target. But to the real important part, we have three Predator Plant Amblyomedes. Yep. This I, is a new card. I've guaranteed I butchered that one. Yes, it is a new card. It requires two Predator Plant monsters. Pretty decent fusion materials, but when it is fusion summon, it then allows you to search for any Predap card. Monster, spell, whatever you want. Yeah. Likewise, while on the field, you can target one monster you control, or one Predator Plant monster you control, or any monster your opponent controls with a Predator counter, tribute it, and then summon any Predator Plant from your deck. So this is just searching and then tutoring. That also, in certain situations where you can apply Predator counters, then just lets you turn into removal as well. This is a fantastic card, but the main importance of this is two things. One, it's a level five. You can access off your instant fusion if you need to. Yeah. Two, it finally gives Predator Plants a monster that they can go into that then does something else. Makes sense. Half the time, you couldn't just directly access your Dregs to play. You had to make a fusion. Yeah. But then half the time, that fusion that you made didn't do anything to get you into the Dragon's Tapelli either, so you have to have always additional cards. This, this card alone facilitates a Dragon's Tapelli by way of either searching for, let's say, something to uh, uh, searching for the Bufalicia to then let you fusion summon, or finding a way to tribute any monster to summon a Chlamydia Sundu to then fusion summon with it and the Chlamydia Sundu to make your Petaplan Dragon's Tapelli. A uh, fantastic card all around. Uh, and then combined with Ultra Polymerization, more plays. We still have the one Predator Plant Chimera Flesia, just a card that you can make likewise with a Predator Plant monster and Dark monster, so. 
to petrify monsters. Yep. Uh, if it, it banishes monsters on the field, it weakens a monster down to like, I think anything less than 4,000, this thing can run over. And if it's sent to the graveyard on the next standby phase, you search for a poly. Yep. Uh, this means if you're in the side deck, if you're playing Super Poly, which probably for a fusion deck, you should be playing Super Poly, you can just grab Super Poly and be ready for your opponent's turn. Nice. We then have the one Shipto Verdum, requires three dark monsters on the field to make, but it negates summons. Also, if there's a Predipal Ancho with a Predipal Encounter on the field that your opponent controls, it revives itself from the graveyard. This can, oh. this can In certain situations, I have fused this card away and then just brought it back for damage. Nice. It's not, it's just it's pretty sure. Yeah. And like that's because it requires three monsters. This is one of those few monsters where you can Preda Prime your opponent's monsters to make. Makes sense. Oh yeah, because it needs three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have the one Guardian Chimera. Unfortunately, there's no way, like, in the Despia deck to make it on your opponent's turn. But it ultimately still is a card that you can make using something like Bufalicula or Chlamydia Sundu. Just pop your opponent's field. Going second helps you do some damage. Yeah. We, of course, have the one Star of Venom, just for Star of Venomness. We then, for the Link Monsters, have the one Link Karibo and the one Relinquish Anima. They're level ones that were Bliss Blip as a level one. Can make to just trigger a search. And they're just decent as all around. They're both dark, too, being relevant to the deck. Oh, that, yeah. We have the one uh, Jasmine, because our entire deck is plants. So sometimes if we need to get a certain plant on the field, this is a way to do it outside of our fusions. And then we have the one Cross Sheep, because we're playing fusions. Fusions. That is a 14-card X deck that, uh, just my style for this channel. For anyone who asks, because I get it, Tony, I get it all the time. They're like, he's only playing 14. He only ever plays 14 on this channel. If you guys want to see the 15th card, it's on his channel. Yes. Actually, I'm feeling generous. Here's the 15th card. Just oh, to explain we're getting a 15th card today. It's this thing. Uh, it's not great, but this is a suggestion. This card is a the new f evolution to the Starving Venom. This is Starving Venom Predator Power Fusion Dragon. Nice. Uh, requires a fusion monster and a out dark... It's monster. out of default, right? Yes. It requires a dark fusion monster and a fusion monster. Okay. Not the easiest thing to make. However, while on the field, two effects. First off, while on the field, uh, if your opponent would activate a card effect, you could tribute any monster with a Predipine encounter, negate the activation of that effect, and destroy it. Again, this includes your opponent's, opponent's monsters. monsters. Nice. Which means that after you spread enough counters on the field with something like your, uh, your, uh, Predator planning? Predator planning or your Draco. Draco Stapelia, yeah. this thing becomes a negate that uses your opponent's monsters to negate. That's pretty strong. Unfortunately, it also means that this is a card that you can't make on a will, uh, on like a willy nilly just because if you don't have Predipine encounters, it does nothing. Yeah. However, it's also a Predator Plant card by the way it's, it's treated always as a Predator Plant card. Yep. Which means if it's sent to the graveyard, you can just revive with anything if you really wanted to. And its effects can be live Oh, later. can Predator Pruning and stuff summon this? Uh, it, by the fact that this card in its own text says it's treated as a Predator Plant card, it can be revived with those cards. Oh, that's great, actually. But that's not all. If this card will be destroyed and sent to the graveyard, it just revives any dark monster from your graveyard. Including itself. Oh. As long as it was uh, destroyed while it was fusion summoned. Yeah. Uh, as a mon as a fusion summon monster. So it can revive itself once, but it can also revive anything that you may have in your graveyard to continue your plays. Yeah. And then you could just revive it in any other way you want. This oh, is a nice. card that you could play, but I guarantee you, you probably have a number of different options. And as we've seen with lists like Jesse Cons, you can mix this deck because of it's, uh, its fusion centric nature with things like Branded or Fusion Destiny to do whatever, ever, another, like whatever manner of crazy fusion plays you want to do. It's a deck that has flexibility. This is more just a pure build. This is more of a pure build uh, for pure plays. Uh, I can do a quick test then if you want, but uh, that's up to you. There, go ahead. All right, uh, we'll see you in a bit. All right, so Tony has a little test hand here, and he wants to show you guys what the deck essentially can do. So yeah. we shuffled up the deck. Right. It's ready right. to go. All right, let's see what we can do this. Uh, our starting hand is going to contain one Prime Pen Orifice Scorpio, one Prada Practice, one Prada Ponix, one Call by the Grave, and one Ash Blossom. Yeah, we can do something with this hand. Uh, unfortunately, since we didn't open a monster that we particularly want to discard, this is where Predator Practice starts us off. Yep. We're going to activate this Predator Practice and special with the Orphan Scorpio. We're yep. then going to add any Predator Plant monster from our deck to the hand, or any Predator card. We're going to add the Bisplip. We're then going to trigger the Orphan Scorpio since it was successfully summoned, send the Bisplip from our hand to the graveyard to then summon out another Predator Plant monster from our deck. Of which we will summon out our Darlington Cobra. And this activates on a separate chain, right? Yes. Okay. In the new chain, two things will trigger. We have the Darlington Cobra as well as the Bisplip. We'll add a Predator Plant Monster, of which we will add a Bufalicula. And then we're going to add from our deck for the Fusion spell, we're going to add the Ultra Polymerization. Nice. From there, we are going to activate the Bufalicula. We're going to activate the Predaponics and then revive back the Bisplip. Yep. We're then going to activate the effect of this and fuse summon using these two monsters, to then summon out. Are Predator Plant and Blumides. Yeah, Blumides on some will then allow me to then grab another Plant Predator card from my deck to my hand, of which I will then grab my Predator Planet. All right, so if anyone's wondering, 
we use this to fusion summon. This is still in hand. We use this effect to fusion summon. Yeah. From there, though, we will then activate the effect of Amblyon Medes, then tribute the Predator Plant Darden and Cobra, and then summon out a different Predator Plant from our deck, of which we will then summon out our Saracenian. Yep. This is the one that gets the effect when it's sent to the graveyard. Correct. From there, we will then activate the effect of our Ultra Polymer infusing these two monsters away. And in doing so, we will then summon out our Predator Plant Dragos Topelia. Yep. In doing so, our Saracenian will trigger to then allow us to add another Predap card from our deck to the hand, of which I will add the Predap Fusion. Yep. Mind you, this is all possible to be done out of anything except for Imperm, because we have the Call by the Grave. Yep. But now we have all the pieces we need to disrupt our opponent. We'll then banish the Predap Plant uh, Ultra Polymer from Graveyard to revive the two materials for our Predap uh, Plant Dragos Topelia, and then set these two cards to pass turn to our opponent. On our opponent's turn, we uh, have... I guess we would also set this. Yeah, if we... Yeah, yeah that card's great. We'll definitely set that. But yeah, this doesn't matter for the combo. It's just to show you. On like, our opponent's turn, obviously, we have the guarantee negate with the effect of our Predator Plan Drex. We can negate one monster. However, if things do get out of hand, we can then proceed to activate the effect of our Predator Practice. We'll use this effect, and then that will allow us to send any Predator Plant monster from our deck to the graveyard to then just put Predator Plant count uh, Predator Counters on anything. We'll the send the Cordyceps. First of all, the card is crazy when you think about it because it Foolish Burials you a card, which is going to get you stuff on your next turn. And then it's also skill draining your opponent. Yeah, so we'll then send the Cordyceps. But that's not all. From here, once this card hits the grave, we can then activate this Predator Plant Fusion and Fusion Summon again. Yep. In this case, because we have two Fusion Monsters, we can Fusion Summon these two to summon out that Predator Plant uh, Predator Power Monster. Yeah. But instead, we can also Fusion Summon using just these two alone to then summon out a second Dragos the Pelia. This will then once again trigger the Saracenia, but it also triggers the Predator Plant in Grave to banish and pop another card, of which we can then search for another Predator Plant monster. Of which, and let's say, in this case, we're going to add a Triantis. So at this point, you've skill drained your opponent, you've popped a card. You, you then put up a second You put Predator up a second negate. For, yep. And then that's still not account for the fact that we still have the Ash and the Call by the Grave. Of course, then going into your opponent's turn, since we sent a Cordyceps into our graveyard, we can banish this Cordyceps and then revive the Saracenian and revive the Bisplip. We can then activate this effect if you just summon with these two to summon out. Yeah, so turn three, this is all turn three. Turn three, you just can go push for game. Yeah. We can even fuse with these three alone and then just go, here's Guardian Chimera, pop the field, this and, and that. And then game. game. Yeah, so yeah. This, this deck pushes for a lot of damage turn three and stuff. And let's not forget, in this weird case, if you do want to fuse with one of these monsters per se, because because you're sending the Sarah Sandy and the you're getting two searches. One of those can be a Predator Pruning to then revive the fusion again for more damage. You have so many plays so that many for plays. that next turn. And this is all done off of just the fact that as long as you can find a way to make your Amblyon Medes, you have your plays going. All right, well, thank you, Tony, for the deck profile. Thank you for the combo video. Appreciate you. If you guys haven't already checked out Tony's channel, make sure to check it out. A link will be in the description. Make sure to like the video if you guys did enjoy. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. With that, Spanko and Tony signing out. Peace.